It's a way to engage users in confronting their trauma memories. And we know that from behavioral psychology and the, the, the key principles of exposure therapy, that facing and confronting the things you fear the most eventually lead to a reduction in that fear or anxiety. The uh, fear or anxiety response habituates. Uh, the stimuli no longer evoke that kind of uh, uh, intense emotional reaction. And that doesn't happen in PTSD very often because people avoid that confrontation. Somebody comes back from the war and they start driving down the 405 freeway and they see trash by the side of the road. And it's like, oh, you know, because it brings back the memory of... Uh, Their buddy died when a piece of trash or something, yeah. It. Right. Um, and so what do they do? They stop driving or they avoid going any on freeways or on roads where there's trash. And eventually that kind of stuff generalizes to you get to the point where you see, you know, the stereotypic guy not leaving his house, hanging out in his basement. Agrophobe, know? yeah. You know, yeah. So um, the goal here, when you avoid something, you get immediate relief. And so that becomes reinforcing. And that counts for emotional uh, memories. If you can avoid having deep emotional memories, put it out of your mind, numb yourself, there's a, a sense of relief. Well, exposure therapy does it the exact opposite. It tries to get you to gradually confront the fear and the anxiety and not avoid and to break that cycle of being anxious, avoiding, leaving, and getting a relief from it. But to go full on and hit it in the head and uh, eventually by doing that over time, the fear diminishes or the anxiety diminishes. People feel less uh, less threat because there's no inherent threat in any of these the kinds of stimuli that we're talking about in the civilian world when you come back, you know, when you come back home. You mm -hmm. don't have to avoid going into crowds for fear that somebody, the suicide bomber, is going to torch the place. This is the head-mounted display. It's a Sony... Uh, system that just came out you put that on your head this is the tracking device You know, as you could see from that the, that scenery, that we're not talking about crytech level uh, digital content. We're talking about something that's you know a little less detailed. Um, and part of the rationale is we want to leave enough room for the patient's own memories to get put into the experience. Um, this this was noted in 1998 with the virtual Vietnam scenario where people 20, 25 years after the Vietnam experience, when they were put in the virtual Vietnam scenario, very graphically impoverished scenario back in the late 90s, um, they would come out of the scene and report seeing things that weren't built into the simulation. It was from their own memories, cool. you know, like a rice paddy, and there was a water buffalo there, and a Viet Cong were firing from the margins of the jungle. None of that was in the scene.